All right, Roger, my friend, thank you for joining me. I always enjoy a conversation with you, and I uh, would love it if you could introduce yourself to people uh, that are tuned in. Uh, so if you're watching on the Voice First FM YouTube channel or listening through the Attention Live Alexa skill, I uh, hope you enjoy the conversation. Maybe you're tuned in through an archive. Uh, so thanks for your attention. I'm excited to introduce Roger to you, who is the uh, senior developer evangelist at Viv Labs uh, and evangelizing the things happening at Samsung Bixby. So Roger, take it away. Uh, tell folks about yourself and what keeps you busy during the day. Sure. Thanks, Ian, and nice to talk to you again. Um, yeah, so uh, as Ian said, I'm a senior developer evangelist, and so really my job is to go out and talk to third-party developers and get them excited about Bixby and excited about building um, for our platform. Um, you know, talk to them about how to get started as they get more advanced, how to build something even better, and just keep on going out and evangelizing the platform and getting people excited about you know, our conversational AI and voice uh, assistant, which we think has some really unique uh, offerings for the marketplace. What you are working on as a company and then your role as the evangelist, um, give us a little insight. I think there's people that are salespeople, they're strategists, they're innovators, they are marketers, they're branders, and they're looking at the voice industry and they're like, wow, look what Roger is doing. Right. Look what, uh, you know, Dave is doing over at uh, Alexa. Right. And they're like, what is it like to be an evangelist for this new tech? Can you give us a little insight? Like, what is this role like for you? And what might it be like for others that say, I'd love to tell the world about what this voice tech company is doing? You know, sure. what's, what's that like? Yeah. So, sure. Um, first of all, voice is super exciting to work in um, because we're so it's so nascent and early and there's so much innovation and excitement. And frankly, I don't think anyone has figured out 10% of it. You know, maybe we're in the first inning, maybe we're in the second inning now, you know, that kind of overused baseball analogy. But um, that's really what attracted me to come into this industry is kind of this new wave, a way of really enabling humans to better interact with their technology. My God, my whole career, I've been thinking about that and right. working on that. And then I saw voice and I was like, wow, that's probably the best way I've seen because it's the most natural way. Yeah, um, yeah but I mean, as far as, as the job and work and that, I mean, it's, um, it's really, you know, I'd say to be a great evangelist, you got to be half geek and uh, a half extrovert, right? Because so, usually those don't go hand in hand, but uh, um, you really need to be someone who loves technology and loves talking about it and loves both doing and talking with others about it. So you got to have your, your marketing chops and your technical chops, uh, which has always fit, fit me and my personality and what I like to do. So uh, it's a great role and really exciting and so great to be in such a, a nascent early technology. I mean, my God, I, I, I keep on seeing things that get me excited. And I know a year from now, I'm going to be like, whoa, right. five years from now, my head will be exploding. So right. great stuff. Absolutely. Now you'll be speaking at Project Voice and we're grateful for that. Uh, can you share what you'll be speaking on and uh, a little insight in advance and uh, maybe invite people, hey, you know, make sure you mark it down. I'll be doing sure. this talk and people are looking, so they look forward to uh, hearing what you have to share. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about our larger presence and then just, and I'll talk a little bit about what, I, what I'm doing. But um, so first of all, on Monday, there is a workshop three hours uh, Monday afternoon. Um, and it's all about learning Bixby and coming and, and learning how to actually build a Bixby capsule. We're okay. gonna use this new feature called templates that makes it super easy to build a capsule. And I can guarantee that everyone who comes there will build a capsule and have some fun doing it. And the whole idea is to introduce you to that. Uh, and then later, so Thursday uh, of the conference is actually more of the Bixby day. Um, we have a bunch of things going on there. Um, Adam Shire is giving a keynote, our co-founder, and then we have a bunch of Bixby technical sessions and some business partner sessions. My particular session, I'm calling Bixby Tips, Tricks, and Templates. And what I'm really going to talk about is how to take advantage of some of the features in our platform um, that are either unique or just really, really well done 
and a good way for you to take what I like to say is a voice experience from good to great. Mm -hmm. And so I'll explain those um, and then a little bit about templates again, about how to get started and kick started. But it's, it's going from good to great uh, with your capsule development. And this is not only designed for experienced people, but beginners can get something out of it as well. Is it, is it designed for experienced people? Like is the experience on Monday as an example, right? This is kind of day zero on Jan on Monday, January 13th. We're there from the 13th to the 17th, but Monday's day zero. Samsung has a big uh, opportunity being made available to developers. I think my question for you, is it really catered to 101 all the way through 401? Like, well, well, yeah, that's the question. Yeah, good, good question. So, I mean, I think more of our voice presence, probably not 401, <laughs> maybe no. 101, 102. I mean, okay. I think we're cognizant of where we sit in the industry yep. and a lot of people have never done anything with Bixby. So definitely Monday is that kind of beginning starting, starting point. Yeah. Um, all of our talks, will definitely, you know, cater and talk to, hey, maybe you don't know Bixby and we'll talk about some of the features. You know, I'm balancing, hey, talking about this feature that you'll understand with Bixby, but also saying, hey, if you're already working with Bixby, here's some things that you can do or some things that you haven't done. Mm -hmm. So I'd say in that 101 to 401, remember me at the 101 to 102 range. And okay. it's really just a reflection of, of how many people are developing for Big Sweden? We're still largely introducing that to a right. lot of developers. Right. And so much like, uh, you know, Google has their actions and Alexa has their skills, uh, Bixby has their capsules, right? And so there's templates and a beginning developer or maybe somebody that's more toward intermediate, if they want a real helping hand up, they can show up on Monday for your three hour event and they can come as a developer that knows nothing or knows little, or maybe they're just kind of getting started and you'll help them through those templates. And again, your talk is on the tips, tricks, and templates uh, specific to Samsung uh, Bixby's capsules. And so that's another opportunity for people to learn. And then of course, Adam, uh, one of the most important uh, innovators in voice will be speaking on Thursday and Thursdays kind of like a Samsung day at Project Voice. So we're looking forward to that as well. Uh, can you give us, in your opinion, kind of the state of the industry as it is uh, here to the end of 2019, as we're going into 2020, where's the state of the industry right now? Yeah, well, that's a great question and a broad question. Um, you know, I mean, I think we're still, like I said, we're very early. What, what, it, what, I really like is there's a lot more uh, kind of public awareness of voice and voice assistance and a way of interacting with, with their technology, right? You know, I gave them to my, my in-laws, you know, a, a smart speaker and they really love it and things and if they love tech, everyone's gonna love tech. They are so, uh, That's right. um, but no, it's an example where people are still really starting to use it. But what I do think is happening, it's really early and people are kind of, we're barking kind of quick commands at them. Yeah. So what I like to say is we kind of got the lower case in assistant going on right now. It does quick things for you. Where that, what I'd like to see is kind of get to that uppercase assistant. And that's where you have a longer running conversation. You actually get closer to think about a human assistant. If you had one, you could say, hey, I need to travel to New York next week. Hey, you know, they know what airline you like to fly, what airport you like to go, you know, fly out of, you know, where you like to stay. And they take care of all of that for you. I think the real opportunity with assistance is more along those lines is really becoming this thing where you have an ongoing, maybe long running, multiple day conversation about planning a vacation, traveling, something like that. And they get really hyper personalized about understanding you. Like I said, put make that A a capital A. But we're definitely lowercase A right now. Um, right. Exciting. People are, you know, discovering it, having fun. Um, but we're still doing really simplistic things, which is not a it's it's where the industry is and where 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 it probably should be, given how new and nascent it is. But there's a lot more coming. When you think about the future and you want to really extend yourself out. Uh, how far does your imagination take you in voice tech? Like when you think about the future, is it 2024, five years out? Do you, 
do you fantasize about three generations from now, right? Your great grandkids, maybe you won't meet them. I mean, with health the way it is today, you'll probably live for a hundred plus years. But thinking about generations to come and how voice tech may impact them as they interact with tech that way. Uh, so as you think about towards the future, you can keep it in your comfort zone, but maybe go out toward the further end. Uh, what do you see coming? You know, whether it's five years or 105 years from now, what do you see coming? And how do you see voice tech really impacting humanity, individuals, and enterprises in a positive way? Uh, yeah, so I think, you know, and God knows the time frames on, on these because I, I, I'm going to be, whatever I say, I'll be completely wrong uh, time frame wise. So I'm not even going to go there. But what I see is, and it's kind of that point of, we all find it, We first way to be communicated was talking. Mm. So by talking to our technology, um, we'll be able to just get things done quicker and faster and easier. And I think it's all about, how many times have I sat down at a computer, I wanna do something and I'm like, I could describe it in a sentence or two. Yeah. But I gotta go find 12 different menus and go look up a manual or go, search for it on Google and do all these things. That's where it, there's some friction there. And I see voices kind of unlocking that friction. And, you know, I think we'll still be typing and swiping five, 10, 20 years from now. I don't think those interfaces are going away. What I think will happen though is a lot more conversational. You'll walk and you'll talk, you'll talk to your house. You walk in your office, you'll talk to it. You're in a meeting at work. I need some information. You'll just talk. There's like this, voice assistant sitting there listening, right? As an right. assistant, willing to answer those questions for you. That's right. Uh, you're with the family, you want some information or you want to go plan or think, what should we do this weekend? Hey, what should we do this weekend? And it's right. like, hey, there's a cool festival coming up this weekend. You want to do that? And almost becomes another part of that conversation in this, I don't know if I want to call it a butler on demand that has all this information there, but is really... Um, always there and very social. That's a big thing about voice. So I'm, you know, I'm sitting in front of a computer right now, but that's a solo activity. Right. But sitting in my living room and if I can just talk to it, my whole family can talk mm -hmm. work right in an office in a meeting. Those are social communal activities. And to date, technology has always been one-to-one -one. me with a computer, me with a phone mm -hmm. voice is really a huge unlock for a more social way of interacting with our technology. And so that's the way, way I see it going is, is being this kind of ambient computing thing around you that lets you uh, just live life better and more in a more fuller way. And what I will be spending, I'll be still typing and swiping, but a heck of a lot less because right. I'll get a lot done by just talking. Yeah, well, there's definitely a bit of friction with two thumbs on a piece of glass. Yep. Not as much friction as there was with 10 fingers on a keyboard. Um, and certainly not nearly as much friction as there has been with the pen and paper, um, which didn't let you interact with tech at all. And uh, there's going to be uh, a unique experience when you see some people completely going voice only. And that might be because they can't read and write sure. or because they don't know the major languages or it might just be because they have some uh, handicaps, if, if we want to call uh, things that. Uh, some, some things that would keep them from having the same functionality that uh, we're graced with. Um, so some will go all in and some will be very resistant. Then they'll watch their grandkids. They'll be like, gosh, they get 10 times more things done than I do. You know, it's just, I think, I think there's amazing, you're right, accessibility, right, and empowering. And then yeah. you, you're talking about people who can't read or write. You know, you think about, you see, I, I think an example, if you look at what kind of mobile has done in the third world, think about what voice can do in the third world, right? Now you just take it to everyone, right? I mean, you know, the, the most disadvantaged people in the world can talk, right? They may have never Absolutely. touched technology. So now you take tech to them. Wow, I, 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 that just blows my mind of how empowering that is for them right. and what the opportunity is there. There's 4 billion people in the world today that make less than $2 and 50 cents a day. There's over 2 billion that do not have access to the internet within walking or bicycle distance. There's no chance for them to be connected. When those 2 billion get internet access, it'll be around the same time that those 4 billion, which includes the two will for the first time be given 
the voice as a tool to be able to speak to tech. So fine, they can't read and write. They can't afford an expensive phone or computer, but they got that cheap little $1.50 ring from Amazon or Facebook or Google or Microsoft or Samsung, right? Whoever places the hardware and then brings in the software. And all of a sudden people that had no chance at being a productive member of the global society for the first time ever, boom, there they are. They can now create value at scale with their voice or they can consume value at scale with their ears. I think that is going to be the great unlock of abundance where people are going to have a chance to completely change the destiny of themselves and uh, those that go after them. So I think that uh, that's why I'm very much uh, mindful of collaboration, right? I don't see you know, Alexa versus Bixby versus assistant versus, you know, Cortana versus Siri versus, you know, SoundHound. Like I don't see it that way at all. Mm -hmm. To me, it's all very collaborative. It's all very healthy that there are competitors that are providing a similar service to the consumer and the enterprise, because what'll happen is this stuff will get better and better and keep lifting. And next thing you know, uh, it'll be a Samsung Bixby capsule that people open up and they can speak in any language and that caps will understand them and allow them to access everything that's available to you and I, but it was never available to them before. So it's very, very exciting uh, for humanity. Um, any final thoughts as we wrap up our interview, Roger? Um, no, but uh, wow. Uh, I, I think, uh, well, yeah, a little bit <laughs> to be fair. Um, uh, love the conversation about the opportunity there. Right, that really is what gets me excited about yeah. this industry, right, and where we're gonna go. Um, so, I guess my last thoughts were: Kate, hey, come, come on down to uh, Project Voice. Uh, we are giving, you know, I'm giving a talk. Three other of my colleagues are giving a talk. There's a bunch of talks that are partners. We're gonna have a booth. We're gonna have that workshop on Monday. Um, come on down, and like you said, you know, what the great thing about this industry is. We all compete a little bit, but maybe with quotes around that, we're all really commonly aligned around where we're going and the excitement there. And we all know each other and we all respect each other. So come on down to see everyone at Project Voice is my, uh, is my message there. Ditto. Come, everybody. Come. Come and join us in Chattanooga, Tennessee at Project Voice which is going to be an incredible five-day conference, Monday, January 13th through Friday, January 17th. And amazing people like Roger will be there uh, sharing everything they possibly can to empower you to do better with your pursuits as an independent or as part of a corporation. So we welcome you and we look forward to seeing you. And Roger, I thank you for your time today. Thank you, Ian. Uh, always a pleasure to talk to you. It is.